G'day guys, it's Mark here from North Oz and in today's video I'm going to be giving you a 6 month review of my 53 litre Mike Hallman dual zone fridge freezer. So around 6 months ago I decided to get rid of my Brass Monkey fridge freezer, it's just a single zone and I wanted something with a little bit more flexibility that had dual zone so I could have a fridge and a freezer and run whatever combinations I wanted and that has a little bit more reliability as well. Uh, and there were a few things that I wasn't happy with with that Brass Monkey that I was hoping that a higher end fridge would fix. So today I'm going to go through what I like and dislike about this fridge freezer but also how does it compare with the much much cheaper Brass Monkey fridge freezer that I was using before and can you get away with a cheaper option? Was it really worthwhile spending the extra money? So let's start off with the things that I really like about this fridge freezer and it has to be well the flexibility of it. I mean it gives you so many different options to have whatever configuration you want to run on it. So for example there's two 12 volt inputs on this fridge one on the front and one on the back which means you can orientate this fridge however you like, or you can plug it into either end. The lid is also reversible as well. So at the moment, I've got it opening up towards kind of my kitchen side, but if I wanted to, I could just flip it around and make it open towards the outside. So if I have my table and that on the other side, I'll be able to access the fridge from the other side of the vehicle. For some people that have maybe a bit more of a flexible setup, like maybe by a canopy, it's okay for them, but when you only have one way in and out of your vehicle, you need to have the flexibility or you're looking for a fridge freezer that opens a certain way, which is really difficult to find. And not only that, if you're buying things online, it can be super difficult to try and figure out which way fridges are opening and closing because the pictures don't really tell you everything you need to know a lot of the time. You need to go and test these things out. So having that 12 volt and the lid flexibility just gives me a little bit of confidence knowing that I can change my setup however I like and my fridge will conform to that setup. The design of the Mike Coolman is very thick and robust. It's not going to be denting if I'm hitting things on it. It's made out of plastic, but it's really solid. And it's got these corners on there that just give it a little bit of extra protection, just especially if you're banging this thing around or you're taking it off your car and you want to just get it to another spot in your campsite. You just know that it's not going to get dented. It's not going to look bad. It's not going to get all danged up. It might sound a little bit silly, but tying the Mike Coolman down was so much easier than trying to tie down that brass monkey fridge that I used to have. The Brass Monkey fridge didn't have any tie downs on it at all and the handles on it were just closed. There was no open loop. These have open loops so I know that I can tie it down wherever I like on whatever slide or whatever tie downs that I'm running and I know that I won't have to drill into the handle or do any sort of DIY fix on it like I had to do with the Brass Monkey. I'm really glad that I went with the dual zone model of this Mike Coolman because it gives me that flexibility if I just want to do a really small trip I can just fire up the really small sectioned and partitioned area of the fridge and I can just set it to a fridge temperature. If I'm doing a trip that's going to go for a couple of nights I'll probably leave the small section off and I use the bigger section a lot more but I leave that little section off so I'm not wasting any of my power. On bigger trips I'll run both sections. I'll use the big section for a fridge and a small section for a freezer so I can just take things out and defrost them as I go. I have a little dog and I hand make food for her. I put it in the freezer and then every few days I bring it from the freezer into the fridge. If I had just a single zone fridge like I used to have with the Brass Monkey I could only take Ginger for two or three days at a time on a trip because I can't keep her food frozen and bring it out into the fridge area. But with this fridge now, it gives us the flexibility to travel a lot longer. This fridge has a lot of ventilation areas as well. Even just on this corner alone, there's ventilation on the side and also on the front. So if for whatever reason you're packing the car as we do, we chuck all that stuff in there and this side gets blocked, it will still get some ventilation from the back. So I'm not too worried about this thing overheating. Moving on to the inside of the fridge, there's a really nice LED light in here that's really good quality, and I can see everything in this fridge freezer that I need to. It also comes with baskets, so if you wanna keep things like milks and that upright, it just makes it a little bit easier. There's also a drainage hole on the bottom, which again, just makes it super easy. Just giving a quick hose out, and you just drop the drainage plug out, and all of the rubbish and stuff will just go onto the ground. With my old brass monkey, I had a few issues where ice would gather up on the sides quite easily. Doesn't seem to be as big of a problem with this Mike Coolman, which I'm really grateful for because I got a little bit sick of the old tomato sauce slushy. Sauce feels frozen. <laughs> tomato sauce slushy. Do you put it in the fridge, do you? Well, yeah. Oh, tomato sauce goes in the fridge. There is also a nice handy little lid as well that just goes over the freezer area or the smaller area, however you want to orientate it. So again, just kind of keeps things nice and enclosed in the one space. There is a divider almost in the middle of the fridge as well. Just makes it super handy if you just want to chuck a few things uh, vertically and you can stack that right side up if you want because it can be quite difficult to stack a big area. The last strength that I'll say about this Mike Coolman fridge is that you don't need Bluetooth and apps and all that stuff. 
to make sure that this thing runs well. You know, it's really easy to use the manual operations on the front of this thing to turn off zones and increase, decrease temperatures and do all that stuff. Makes it super easy, just if you're out on the road. I get a little bit sick of having to use my phone all the time. I like to just keep it away, especially when I'm camping and when I'm traveling. So just to know I don't have to use it to monitor the fridge. I just know it's going to be running. All the connections on it are really secure as well, much more secure than my Brass Monkey. So I know that I'm not gonna have to worry about there being a connection on the fridge as well, because it's really solid. So just knowing that all of the connections are really solid, that I can use all the manual buttons on it is really super, super easy to use and you don't need um, you know, to read the user manual a hundred times to understand what's going on with it. So it is really good for the ease of use. After listening to all the strengths, you're probably thinking, wow, this is an amazing fridge freezer. And it really is, but there are some things that I don't like about it. So let's talk about some of the weaknesses of the Mike Coleman fridge freezer. So something that you've probably seen just by looking at this shot that we have here right now is the fact that it's sitting up quite high and on some homemade risers. This fridge freezer has a massive footprint. It takes up quite a lot of room. And I think it's because of these extra corners as well, which doesn't help. And it does stick out quite a lot compared to, in terms of size, it's quite big compared to some of the fridge freezers of a similar volume. But when I rushed out and bought some fridge slides because I knew I was getting a fridge soon, I didn't really think about the fact that this wasn't going to fit on the fridge slide. And I wasn't really thinking that this would be that much bigger than the actual fridge slide. Cause it's kind of a standard size fridge slide. And to go much bigger than this fridge slide actually costs quite a lot of money because it's gonna be designed for a lot bigger fridges and a lot more weight as well because you know the bigger the fridge, the heavier they are. So this fridge slide is actually rated quite well for the weight and the size of this fridge. But unfortunately, it's just not big enough to fit the footprint of this fridge. So I had to get a little bit creative and rise it up a little bit just so that the sides aren't hitting um, the, well, the sides of the uh, fridge slide. So it's kind of a bit of a DIY fix. It's holding up fine now. I put some non-slip mat there as well, but just so you know, it is quite a large fridge for the volume. On my most recent camping trip, I finally cracked it when I took out these cages that go into the fridge. So these little compartment holders, whatever you want to call them, they're just, they're just not very well designed. And they are designed to, uh, I guess, allow bottles and stuff to be standing up but I just had so many issues with just not being able to fit, well, mostly the bottles that I needed and a standard size bottle of even like milk and things like that can be quite difficult to fit into this fridge with this cage. And one of the main reasons why I got rid of it was because this flat area here sits on top of the main compressor area. That's not the issue. The issue is this area here, about two grids worth, sits over the top of the big opening in the main compartment. So what you find is that you can't actually put anything, you can't reach in and get anything, and that's taking away a good well, 10 centimeters of usable space. So if you've got your bottles there, lined up in the middle section there, and you know, you've got some stuff on top of here, you're missing out on all of this space here underneath the grate that you just can't get to it sectioned off. So my Coleman really should have a good look and see how they can make this a little bit better. Maybe using this opening down here and then using another little extra little grid grate thing uh, down the bottom there, just to make it a little bit easier to stack some stuff might have worked a little bit better. Adding that extra compartment would have helped. But yeah, Mike Coolman, you need to think a little bit more about that one. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for Mike Coolman to only put one drain plug in a two compartment fridge, but they did it and there's only one uh, drain plug and it's in the main section and not in the little section. Now you can lift up that little divider so it's not too much of an issue if you're doing a big clean out. But again, it's just another thing that you have to do and how much would it have cost to put an extra drain plug in? And about that divider, I am a little bit worried that if you have just one of the compartments on and not the other, how much of that cool air actually kind of leaks over into the hot side of the fridge? And it's something that I think a little bit about and I'm sure that someone who's a bit smarter than me could go ahead and do a lot more testing on that. But that's just something just without me doing any testing, it's just something that I worry about a little bit. Um, that divider as well, it is quite thick. I just don't know how much, uh, I guess, thermal resistance and thermal insulation is actually in that divider. So it's just something I think about, especially it's so hot here in Cairns that if I'm just running one side, surely there's gonna be a bit of a battle between the hot side and the cold side. 
with that divider trying to fight off that heat. Now there was one really big issue that I used to have with my Brass Monkey fridge and it was that there used to be always condensation on the outside of the fridge. It would always happen and it's kind of annoying because for whatever reason on some days, some mornings, it would be so much of it and I'd just get worried that that condensation is going to cause mold and swelling in the wood if it sits on top of the timber that I have here for too long. So I just think about that a little bit. That doesn't seem to be as big of a problem with the Mycoolman. I do notice some little patches appear, but it's not to the point where it's leaking and where I'd be concerned it would be causing mold. Let's now compare the Mycoolman to the Brass Monkey fridge and is it worthwhile upgrading and spending the extra money on the Mycoolman fridge freezer? My old Brass Monkey fridge used to use up a lot of power and it's mostly due to the fact that it had quite thin insulating walls which you could tell by all the condensation building up on the outside of it and you know so it's always fighting to try to keep the contents of the fridge cool. I was a little bit concerned though when I bought the My Coolman because it is a bigger fridge and it's got two zones so I was thinking well geez my Brass Monkey is only a small fridge this is much bigger do I need to get a bigger battery than 100 amp hours of lithium? Luckily, the answer to that was no, because this fridge is really efficient. I can't give you exact numbers comparing this to my Brass Monkey, but I can tell you just from going to bed at night with the battery on about 95, 90%, just running a couple of things like lights and that every night with both the Brass Monkey and the Mike Coolman, when I would wake up in the mornings, especially on really, really hot nights with the Brass Monkey, the battery would be down to around 70, 75%, which is a lot more than I was thinking I was going to be using on that night. But with the Mike Coolman, I'm really only using around 10%, roughly. And like I said, guys, these are rough numbers, but I can tell you for sure that this is a much more efficient fridge than the old Brass Monkey. The plastics on the Brass Monkey as well became quite brittle and the display was lifting. If you haven't seen my video on that, you can go and check that out. But there are a number of things quality wise that were wrong with the Brass Monkey, even after only like six months. And I could see them already appearing. I haven't seen that yet on the Mike Coolman. Everything is built in really solidly. The display on this is built in really solid. The plastics here you can tell are of a high quality and are clearly UV resistant because I leave it in my car all the time and I haven't seen any fading or anything like that yet. Uh, it's not looking crusty, nothing. It's looking really good at the moment. In terms of general build quality, you have to say the Mike Coolman is going to last a lot, lot longer than the Brass Monkey. Like I mentioned in the strengths of this video, the 12 volt inputs on this fridge are really solid. Now, when you compare that to the Brass Monkey fridge I used to have, it used to connect and disconnect all the time when I would be getting on really tough and really rough tracks. So with the Brass Monkey, I would never really be too sure if by the time I got to my destination, because I don't want to keep pulling over all the time to check it, I didn't really know if my fridge and all the stuff I had in the fridge is going to well be off by the time I got to where I was going. But luckily with the Mike Coolman, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I know that this thing has a really solid connection and it's not going to be making my food go off at any point in time. So the Mike Coolman is about three or four times more expensive than my old Brass Monkey. So are we getting three or four times more value for money when you're buying this fridge? In my opinion, absolutely, it's definitely worth the upgrade. But it depends on the person. You just might be someone that's going out once a month, maybe once every two months, and doing a trip where you need a fridge or a freezer. So if you're that sort of person, maybe it's not worthwhile spending the extra three or four times the amount of money on a Mike Coolman. But for me, it is. I spend a lot of time camping. I spend a lot of time as well doing day trips. Not only that, but I go to sporting events where I need my fridge or my freezer to keep my things cold. So for me, it makes a lot of sense to have something that's reliable that stays in my car all the time. There's a reason why I bought this fridge in the first place and it was to replace the Brass Monkey because I could see the quality of it deteriorating and I didn't have much confidence that it was going to last much longer. I hope this video has helped you to make a decision on whether it's better to go for a cheaper product like a Brass Monkey or to go with a more expensive brand like a Mike Coolman. They both have their pros and cons, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. It just depends on what you do. You know, it depends on how much money you have, what's your budget, uh, how often you use it, lots of things like that and you know do you really want to be spending all this money on a fridge freezer when you can be spending that money on other things i'll leave that up to you guys but if it's just a simple case of we'll take all the money out of it we'll take everything out and we'll just say which one is a better fridge i would absolutely go with the mike coolman and that's why it is and will be for the foreseeable future anyway 
it will remain in my Prado for all of my camping trips. If I missed anything in this video, you wanna know more about it, go ahead, chuck it in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you leave them as well. Liking the video helps other people see the video as well, helps me out as well. So go ahead, do that. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. Oh my goodness, so many things to do. I'll see you guys in the next video.